Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today I am going to talk to you how to make the rail shot. Uh, what is the rail shot? Is any shot where your object ball is on the rail, your cue ball is coming in, and you're making it in a corner pocket. And this shot is a lot of players, regardless of your level, dread this shot. But it is not that difficult a shot once you know the little nuances of the shot. So today I'm going to show you how to make the shot, how to get position on the shot, and ways to perfect your rail shot. Let's run the intro. Are we on the air? So let's start from scratch. What are the mechanics of making this shot? A lot of players ask me, do I hit the ball first? Do I hit the rail first? Uh, I have been taught from day one, when I was 10 or 11 years old, to aim for the ball and the cushion to hit them simultaneously. Now, it is almost impossible to do that, but it is your aiming spot. Now, you're gonna be putting English on this ball sometimes. I almost automatically put uh, English on this shot to help the ball go down the rail, but it really depends on what I need to happen to this ball after making the shot. So I'm gonna teach you the basics of how I make the shot with and without English and then I'll show you how to get position with this shot. So let's get started. First thing, and this is a relatively uh, long rail shot for some of you, but the mechanics are the same whether the seven ball is there or here or whether the cue ball is here or here, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're all basically the same shot. So what I'm doing is I am aiming for the ball and the cushion. And frankly, if position is a non-event, if it's the last ball or I'm going to be playing another ball that I know I can get on from anywhere in the table like that, uh, one of the things that I add to my rail shot is English. I put my English on the inside of the object ball, which means if the ball is over here to my left, I'm hitting the cue ball on the right-hand side. That would be inside English. The outside English obviously would be if I hit it on the opposite side. I almost never, unless I have to play a special position, I almost never shoot this shot with outside English for the simple reason that if I put outside English on this shot, I am literally forcing that object ball away from the rail as, to, as opposed to keeping it hugging the rail. So if you can shoot it without English, all the better, especially from distance, because you have to adjust for throw, squirt, all those good things, deflection that come along uh, with shooting long shots with spin. I've been doing it for so long that that's the way I do it, and I would imagine as most of you guys move up in the ranks, you're gonna be doing it the same way. But we, all, we don't always have the benefit of shooting a shot and not worrying about position. So I'm gonna show you how to shoot it, when position is not a, a matter, I'm going to show you how to shoot it when you need to get in position, and I'm going to show you some drills that will help you master the shot and get in position at the same time. So basically, I'm aiming for the ball and the cushion. If you think in terms of a ghost ball, I want my cue ball to be there, obviously, so that I can send this straight down the rail. Now, it is almost impossible to hit that exact spot and it is almost impossible to keep a ball on the rail. So what are the, one of the things that we have to do is make sure we're shooting the shot with good enough speed that we can take advantage of the edges of our corner pockets. Without those edges, this shot is very difficult. And on some tables, it's easier to make the shot than others. If you have tight pockets, you're not gonna be able to have that object ball drift out uh, more than a few centimeters, but um, if you have looser pockets or if you shoot it with a slower speed, you can get away with a lot of stuff. So even in professional matches, you'll see a guy shoot a, um, an object ball on the rail and it seems to drift out uh, as much as a half an inch or an inch and still make it. And that's because he shot it with pocket speed, so he took advantage of the edges of the pocket. So what I'm aiming for is the ball and the cushion at the same time. And I'm gonna shoot this first one without any spin at all. So no English at all. 
hitting the ball and the cushion at the exact same time. Now, as I mentioned, when I shoot this shot, I naturally put inside English on the shot. So if I'm shooting it on this side, I am adding right hand English. If I'm shooting it on the other side, I am adding left hand English. And the shot looks like this. Now, I don't know if you guys could tell from that, but the nine ball was holding the rail a lot tighter than the previous shot. And that's the reason why I apply the English. I've been doing it for years. It is my most successful way of doing it. And also, it gives you the spin that you need to go around the table if you're playing position. How do you master that rail shot? Forgetting all about position, I'm gonna teach you how to do that right now. I teach every shot exactly the same way. When I have a student and they tell me, oh, I have a difficult time with a long draw shot, or they tell me I have a difficult time with a long stun shot, or I can't make a spot shot, or whatever the case might be, I teach them exactly the same way each time, and that's how you're gonna learn this shot. You're gonna learn this shot by mastering that shot. And when that shot is automatic, you're gonna bring it here. Then you're gonna bring it here. Then you're gonna bring it here. Some people are gonna to need to shoot thousands of them before this shot is 90 to 100% for them. Then you're gonna bring it here. The difference between these two shots is obviously this is a much tougher cut shot. If that rail wasn't there, and I gave you this as a cut shot, it's basically, I guess, about the same angle as a spot shot. But for me, it's the same shot. I'm shooting it again with inside English and walking it down the rail. So the way the magic pill, everybody wants a magic pill in this game. Here's your magic pill. The way to learn that shot, to be able to make it automatically like that, is to make it easy and then harder, harder, harder until you have it automatic. If you have trouble from here, you bring it up to here. And if this is a layup for you, bring it back here. The thing is, you need to progress into all of these shots. So that's how you're gonna get good at this shot, by taking it from an easy point to a more difficult point. And for some of you, that's gonna be an hour, and some of you, it's gonna be a year. So I can't tell you how long it's gonna take. It depends on your abilities, uh, your stroke, your fundamentals, your commitment to the shot, maybe even your age, as far as seeing the shots down the table. If you, if you um, have older eyes, it might be a more difficult shot for you. But it is a shot you have to have in your game. You're not gonna get good at this game without the rail shot, because there's not a lot you can do about it when that ball's on the rail, except make it. And if you're not gonna get in position, all bets are off. So let's talk about position play. I like to use the seven, eight, and nine for examples because they, the shots apply to eight ball, nine ball, 10 ball, whatever the game. There's a couple things that could happen with that seven ball shot. I could need to get on the eight. If the eight was here, I might need to get on the eight if the eight was over here. There's a lot of different things that can happen to it. So in some cases, I'll wanna shoot this with draw or stun to bring the cue ball back across the table. So I might shoot a shot that looks like this. and have the cue ball drift back across the table. Now, what is important is not only do I have it drift back across the table, but have it come with the proper speed. Now, one of the things when I talk about these position shots, one of the things you wanna keep in mind and you'll see in the shots that I take is I don't want to get perfect. I don't wanna have a straight in shot. One of the worst things that can happen to you as a player is this situation. 
especially if you need to get on another ball. If you're in this position, or even worse, this position, it is very difficult to get anywhere else on the table. So when you shoot this shot, it's not a perfect shot if you drift it over and stop it here. It's a perfect shot if you stop it there because now you can get on that nine ball. So keep in mind, keep the cue ball off the rail. You already got a ball on the rail that's causing you trouble. Another way to shoot this shot would be, let's say we need to get on the eight and the eight is over here now. We're not gonna be able to hold this ball up. So one of the things we could do is drift it over here and then take that shot on the eight. But what if we needed to, get back over here and our shot is set up this way. One of the things we can do is to come off with three rails, here, here, and here, to get on the eight. We're gonna do this with high right hand English with a shot that looks like this. And now we have a very easily makeable shot on the eight ball. So, Different positions, different types of English. I can't show you every possible scenario today, but I did want you to see a couple of the examples because sometimes you're gonna shoot this shot with right hand English, sometimes you're gonna shoot it with draw, sometimes you're gonna shoot it with follow. Let's take a look at the shot with draw. This is probably the most challenging rail shot you're gonna shoot. The seven is on the rail. We need to get on this eight ball here we could try to go around the table and come off this rail and maybe get over here, but that is not the shot we want to shoot. Uh, we want to play the seven ball there. We want to come back, come off of this rail with reverse English and have position on this eight ball and then ultimately on this nine. So what we're going to do is shoot this shot with low left hand English, which creates some additional problems for us, which I'll talk to you about in a second but we need to come off of that rail, come back here, and once the cue ball comes off of that rail and arrives here, it'll have reverse English on it, which will keep it from running too wild out of our path and we'll still have a position on this eight ball. Shot looks like this. Now, if I had the running English on that shot, our cue ball will be all the way over here. But as you can see, we managed to get a position where we can make the eight and get on the nine. So not an easy shot at all. Let's talk about what the challenges are. If you recall, I was telling you the technique that I use to keep that ball hugging the rail, and that is to use inside English. So on this shot, I would naturally put right hand English on it, which will help that ball stay close to the rail because the right hand English is pushing the ball in this direction towards the pocket. Because we are using left hand English, the ball is actually being forced away from the pocket, out of the pocket, so we need to shoot this shot with enough speed to let it arrive at the pocket before it has a chance to get away from the pocket. So that's what makes this shot challenging. Also, we're not just drawing it back. It's that all that spin that makes the, the shot more difficult. If I shot it as a regular draw shot, it would look like this. And that does nothing for us. So we need that spin, we need that English to come off of this rail in this direction. It is one of the more difficult draw shots and one of the more difficult rail shots you're gonna run into, but it's something you need to understand because it comes up very often. You might be playing this game for years before you have that draw with outside English in your game so how are you gonna learn it? You're gonna put the ball there, put your cue ball here and shoot it, 
here, here, and then work your way back. And then ultimately, it'll be nothing for you. But keep in mind, you're going to have to build on this slowly. Don't just get at the table and try to shoot it over and over again, hoping that one day you're going to make it. Work your way up to that shot. Let's look at another situation. Now we have a much more pleasant scenario. We need to make the seven to get on the eight, which is on the rail, but it's going to happen almost automatically for us. The path of the cue ball is going to take us in a position for that eight ball without any problems at all. Our challenge here is making the seven ball because we're further from the pocket. The key is to not overshoot this shot. You need to shoot it with a speed that is going to allow you to take advantage of the edges of the pocket and with a speed that is going to reach the pocket all at the same time. So you hear us talk about shooting at pocket speed. This is your classic pocket speed shot. You just want to hit it enough to reach the pocket, have the ball fall in, and the cue ball is naturally going to come over here. You also need to check your angles. If I'm here on this shot, it's a totally different scenario than if I'm here. Because from here, I still can get position on the eight, but I'm gonna be so close to the eight that it's going to be a difficult shot getting on the eight. I might even collide with the eight ball. Where here, I'm gonna have such a wide angle that I might scratch in that corner pocket. So when you're learning these shots, you will be learning the angles as well. And as I said, you're moving the cue ball around, making the shot easier and, and more difficult for yourself while you learn it. And pay attention at those times for how, about how the cue ball is reacting after you make the shot. Because once again, making that seven ball all day and night does not win a game of eight ball or nine ball for you. You have to make the seven ball and get in position and there's no better way to learn the position on these rail shots than to learn the position while you're learning the mechanics of making the rail shot. So let's shoot the shot. Do you see how soft I hit that ball? Now the only thing wrong with that shot would have been scratching obviously, but I knew enough to shoot it at pocket speed so that I wasn't going to scratch. There's another thing you have to keep in mind. I already talked about it. You don't want the cue ball to end up here because now you're shooting off the rail and you don't want the cue ball to end up here. Now you're fortunate enough that you could probably make the eight, leave the cue ball there and make the nine. But if you had this shot, it's not gonna be quite as easy. So keep all of those things in mind while you're learning the shot and your life will be a lot easier when you're making these rail shots. Let's look at another situation. Tell me gang, are you out from here? If you're an intermediate player, beginner player, you're very happy to see this. You think you're out. Oh, I just, you know, I learned just watching Brian shoot it. I'm gonna hit the ball in the cushion. I'm gonna hit it pocket speed. For those of you who are not familiar with the nuances of pool, this is not position. This is not out. So what do we do to get position on this shot? It's a couple of things you could try. How does right hand English work out? Remember Brian likes to put right hand English on this shot. Still not there. What you're gonna do in this situation, and it will come up a lot. You might not be getting on the eight ball, but you'll be getting on other shots. You'll see when I perform a number of different uh, rail drills later on for you guys, that this shot is key because you know exactly where the cue ball is going and you can get position on situations like this. All we're gonna do is shoot a stun shot right into our ghost spots uh, location and the cue ball will come across table and give us position on the eight. The shot looks like this. 
straight across the tangent line, we've got position on the eight ball. All of you can make that shot. So you need to recognize these situations and recognize what is going to happen when you do different things to the cue ball. The only way to get there is to shoot a lot of them. And I'm gonna show you drills today that will get your rail game up to new highs. That's the whole point of this video, to take your rail game from wherever it is right now to new highs, whether you're a beginner or an advanced player. The drills that I'm gonna show you, three drills, are all very, very difficult. Only the most advanced of you are going to be able to get through these drills. I even missed one of the shots on the drill, you'll see it. But only the most advanced of you are going to be able to come close to getting through the drills, which I say come close, I mean making 90% of the shots. But like all of the drills I show you, you can make it easier or more difficult than what I show you. I'm not sure you can make it more difficult, but you can make it easier. All you have to do is give yourself ball in hand. All you have to do is give yourself more than one attempt at the shot. All you have to do is not worry about playing position. You'll see that each of these drills involve playing position. So take the drills that I show you and make them your own. Don't try to do what I do if you're not at that level yet because it makes it frustrating and more frustrating than doing drills is doing drills that you can't achieve. Let's take a look. Okay, as I mentioned, these drills are on the advanced side. Uh, with this first one, what you're doing is you're putting a ball in front of each diamond. You have ball in hand only on the first shot. Now, again, if you guys are not at this level, just give yourself ball in hand. But the idea is to shoot off the balls in any order you want, getting position on your next shot. So you can go left or right. You can shoot all from one side and then the other. Uh, you're going to be using inside, outside, English, sometimes draw, uh, different speeds. And the trick here is to run through the rack without hitting any other balls and while getting position on your next shot. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can make this drill easier for you. You don't have to play position on every shot. You don't have to worry about hitting um, the middle of the table every time. Give yourself ball in hand if you have a problem with this. But don't cheat yourself. If you miss a shot, put the ball back on the diamond where it came from and finish the drill. You do not want to miss any of these uh, as far as not executing the shot. You can see there I missed a two ball, put it back, and then went through the rest of the drill. So whether you make the majority of them or very few, go through the entire thing so you're shooting the long ones and the short ones. And again, if you don't have the ability to play each of these uh, with position, feel free to take ball in hand until you can work up to this point. Let's look at our next drill. This next one, some of you might find even more difficult than the first one, because even though there's not balls on the opposite side of the table, you get an opportunity to use two rails, but you don't have the opportunity to switch to the other side of the table if you get out of position with your shot. So for each of the shots up and down the rail, you have to get in position for all the balls being on one side of the table. And that can be a little bit of a challenge. And then I have a third variation of this drill we'll look at right now. In this variation, the balls are on both sides of the table, but we're only playing the balls that are on one side. This eliminates your ability to use the second rail for position because you can't collide with the balls that are on the opposite side of the table. So this one requires a lot more touch shots. You don't get the benefit of using uh, three rail position. So you're just laying them out there with the intention of crossing uh, the, um, the table on the, uh, the long way. And what you're trying to do here is get position on each ball as you go down that rail. So the shots get more and more difficult. The position gets more and more difficult because you have wider angles. And you need to use finesse to keep from getting too narrow an angle and too wide an angle for these balls. So this one, 
might be the absolute most challenging because again you don't have the benefit of both sides of the table for position or for choices of shots and then when you get down to this last ball it can be very challenging because you're going to have a pretty wide shot to shoot at. Let's look at the next one. I really like this one coming up. Now with this one you have to pay attention to the setup. You're going to be shooting the balls in rotation. In other words, in numerical order. You have ball in hand on your first shot. There's a ball on each of the short rail diamonds. They have to be in this particular order. One, five, three, coming from the right to left at the far end of the table and two six four coming from right to left on this end of the table now you can switch up your one and your three your four and your two but it's important that you leave the five and the six in the center or you can't possibly run them in rotation well you can but it becomes an almost impossible feat so this drill is really important as far as getting up and down the table, which is a challenge that we have in all Q sports. Eight ball, nine ball, straight pool, 10 ball, you name it. So this is great for working on your rail game and working on your position game because sometimes you're gonna be going straight up and down the table. Sometimes you may have to shoot a force follow with English like I just did, but you guys should practice this one. Give it a shot, it is fun. Uh, but it can be frustrating for intermediate players and below. So check these drills out. Let me know in the, in the comments how you make out. And again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.